Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 514. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite sector, which is the cannabis sector. I started talking about this in November on my special broadcast of my two millionth download episode. And at that time, I mentioned that one of the fastest growing sectors that came to my attention was the cannabis sector, projected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 17%. So this got my attention because I'm always looking for cycles and trends and what things are doing well. And this is very exciting to me. So I have even more exciting news, and that is this cannabis ETF is up 22% year to date versus 5% for the S&P and 4% for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should go out and buy this. I'm not even recommending that you buy it. I'm simply providing education and letting you know that there are places to invest that perhaps might outperform the S&P this year. They might also be a good cushion against the S&P this year. We'll have to see. But I did talk about my three favorite sectors being cannabis, precious metals, and infrastructure. And I saw an article today that I want to share with you about New York possibly looking to legalize marijuana and it mentioned my favorite cannabis ETF, which is symbol MJ. Looking at a chart, it looks like MJ is quite overbought. So I would recommend if you are looking to invest in this, first, speak to your financial advisor as always, and second, buy on weakness or dollar cost average into it because it looks like it probably is due for a pullback. It's had a pretty strong run up and it's looking very oversold right now in the chart. So I would not run out and purchase anything and never purchase anything on a tip. Always do your own research. Always make this the top of your funnel where you start looking at earnings, you start looking at track record, you start looking at what other companies are in the ETF. Take some time to do your research and always remember that any investment means you can lose money. All right, let's talk about New York. What looks like New York might be moving toward legalizing cannabis for adult recreational use. This article comes to us from MarketWatch and it says, New York is the most influential market for consumers and continues the steady march toward national normalization of the cannabis industry. Just as a side note, before I read the article, which by the way, was written by Ciara Lenane, I want to point out that there are 33 states that already have some form of legalization. Pretty amazing already, I think. And New York happens to be one of those states that has already legalized cannabis for medical use. But here's what the article says. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's plan to legalize cannabis for adult recreational use in the Empire State is a milestone in the push toward full legalization of the substance in the U.S., experts said Wednesday. Cuomo said Tuesday in his State of the State speech that he's including in his budget for the current fiscal year a plan to make cannabis legal for adults over the age of 21. The governor is aiming to create a legal industry that would include minority and women-owned businesses and create jobs in some of the more economically deprived parts of the state. Ten states so far have legalized cannabis for recreational use, while another 33 have legalized medical cannabis. Legalize adult use cannabis, he said. Stop the disproportionate impact on communities of color. And let's create an industry that empowers the poor communities that paid the price and not the rich corporations who come in to make a profit. Smoke Wallen, president of California-based cannabis company Vertical Companies, 
said the move is a significant step forward in the mainstreaming of the industry. Although the fourth most populous state after California, New York represents the most influential market for consumers and the steady march toward national normalization, he said. We expect the continued state-by-state liberalization of cannabis use to continue to put pressure on the federal government. Rob DePisa, co-chair of the Cannabis Law Group at law firm Cole Schatz, agreed, noting New York's influential role in many industries, from fashion to business to entertainment. This will change everything, DePisa said. Once New York enters the market, we'll see bright young people come in and challenge the industry. Cuomo is expecting to generate about $300 million in annual tax revenue from the new business, although he will include an option for counties to opt out of legal sales if they choose. Funds raised would be used to finance a state traffic safety committee for small business development and for substance abuse services and other programs. The governor is proposing to impose a 20% state tax, and a 2% county tax on transfers of cannabis from wholesalers to retailers, along with a $1 per gram tax on dry flour for growers and a 25% per gram tax on trim. That may put a steep burden on companies operating at the wholesale level, said DePisa, while Cuomo's intention to include unionized labor in the new industry is a worthy goal that may add still further costs. Having seen what we have on the West Coast, When these markets come online, there is typically high demand at the start, followed by oversaturation that can result in way more cannabis than is needed, and so the price falls, he said. In 2015 and 2016, for example, the wholesale price of a pound of cannabis in West Coast states that have legalized recreational cannabis was above $2,000. The comparable price fell below $400 last summer in Oregon, thanks to oversupply putting pressure on growers. I want to take a few seconds to tell you about how I read more books and stay ahead of the curve. It's not by reading books, but instead by listening to them, like you are right now. With Audible, there are over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, and your first audiobook is free. I suggest you get the audiobook of Think and Grow Rich, Or you can check out my website resources page where I list all of my favorite financial books and you can see exactly what books I've read and recommend you read. Then get started with Audible by visiting lindapjones.com forward slash free book and order your first audiobook free. Get Think and Grow Rich or another book from my recommended list and be sure to go to lindapjones.com forward slash free book to get started checking off the books you want to read with your free book from Audible. I'll post the link to your free Audible book in the show notes. Now back to the show. Cannabis companies need to be well capitalized, but are unable to access capital in the form of capital markets or bank loans. Cannabis is still illegal at the federal level, where it is classified as a Schedule I drug, putting it in the same class as heroin and cocaine. As long as the federal prohibition is in place, companies can't have bank accounts at federally insured institutions, and they can't sell product across state lines. I want to pause right there for a moment and just make a point, and that is that I am not in favor of cannabis in terms of drug use. Really, my excitement about cannabis is for the medical uses. So I just want to give you my opinion. I know that Uh, Some people are pro-recreational use and some aren't. I am pro-medical use, so I just wanted to put that in there. The article goes on to say, that's the Achilles heel in this business. Normally, if you have a surplus or price plummets, you just ship it to another state. But here you don't have that option, said DePisa. Verticals Wallen said that Cuomo's revenue projection is conservative and that he would expect revenue from a city as densely populated as New York to be closer to $1 billion upon full rollout. Given that the much smaller state of Colorado is generating several hundred million dollars annually, it seems reasonable, he said. Colorado's population is 5.6 million, while New York's statewide population is more than three times that. 8.5 million in New York City alone. And the last thing the article says is the ETF-MG Alternative Harvest ETF-MJ was up 
on Wednesday and gained 22% so far in 2019, while the S&P 500 has gained about 5% and the Dow Jones has added about 4%. End of article. So I do want to comment on this uh, too much supply that they're talking about. In Canada, where cannabis is completely legal, there are shortages. So they're not able to provide all that they're looking for. And of course, we can't ship in between country lines, so we can't help them out in the U.S. But they are having shortages. In the U.S., because you can't ship between the states, it does create certain shortages in certain places. However, one of the things I'm hearing from cannabis growers is they really want to create brands around the cannabis. So they don't just want to have this be a commodity. They want to provide a strain of cannabis that is high quality, that maybe tastes better or is smoother or maybe is more effective medically. So they are experimenting with the different strains of cannabis, trying to brand them, trying to differentiate them. And I think that's going to be an important thing going forward. I think, you know, it's just like tobacco. If you think about cigarettes, all different cigarettes have different flavors, tastes, brands, perceptions. It's very, very different. And I think that cannabis is trying to do the same thing, not only for the recreational use, but also for medicinal purposes. And don't forget, the cannabis market is split up into three different things. The recreational drug use, or people who smoke it, people who use it for medicinal purposes, like CBD oil in a concentrated form, and or people who use it for beverages or food. So these are the three distinct areas of cannabis and all three of those areas I think are really going to grow. So right now it might be that it's more used for recreational use, but in the future, I think both the medicinal and the entertainment, or if you wanna say food and beverage, is going to significantly increase. So I think this market has so much room to grow so many applications and uses, I do have the sense, I could be wrong, but I do have the sense that it will be approved at the federal level this year. I just feel that it probably will be. Again, that's not set in stone. That's just my opinion. Don't use that as any information to invest. It's just an opinion. Do all your research, do all your homework. Don't invest just because you listen to this. And don't forget, investments can and do lose money. Having said all that, cannabis is really one of my favorite sectors. I think, again, the growth potential is really exciting. The uses of it are going to be exciting to watch. The legalization, the growth in different sectors, not only in the United States and, of course, already in Canada, but also in different parts of the world. I think other countries are looking at legalizing it as well. And we're going to see this be a worldwide growth opportunity, which is one of the things that makes me super excited about it. So I thought I would just bring this to your attention and we're going to be following along on this and talking about this more over the year as this is one of my very favorite sector picks for the year. If you'd like to become a better investor and work more closely with me in my inner circle, send me an email at lpjhome at gmail.com and ask me about the VIP experience. If you haven't yet joined me on Instagram or Facebook, I am giving simple steps to financial freedom in little bites over on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones or facebook.com forward slash Linda P. Jones fan page. Also, the Wealth Heiress book is back in stock, and we will be starting up the contest again for book reviews and podcast reviews. So please get your copy so you can read it and do your review and qualify for one of 25 prizes I'm going to be giving away soon. If you haven't already subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, please hit the subscribe button so you're informed as soon as new podcasts are available. And I kind of like this idea of surprising you once in a while with a little bonus episode. So you might hear me do that from time to time. It's kind of fun. Let me know what you think of the podcast in the survey. 
And if you have some suggestions, things you like about the show, things you don't like about the show, that's where you let me know is in the survey, which is in the show notes. Okay. And by the way, if you heard some background noise, it's raining here in the desert. <laughs> so I'm really sorry for any background drops you're hearing, but that's my noisy rain outside. Yes, we've had rain for three days in a row here in the desert. So I apologize for that. It is just mother nature having her way with us. <laughs> that's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.